My name is Michael Saravo. I'm the managing attorney here at Parker Wakeman, and I'm a former Marine. I served from 1986 to 1990. Among many of the bases that I served at, Camp Lejeune was one of them. I wanted to provide you with a timeline of significant events that occurred in connection with the Camp Lejeune toxins and the subsequent potential lawsuits. In 1941, Camp Lejeune was established. In 1942, the Hadnot Point Water Treatment Plant was established to provide water to Camp Lejeune service members and residents. In 1951, Tarawa Terrace Subdivision and Wellfield Construction began. In 1958, H.E. Legrand, a consultant hired to evaluate water resources, found that Camp Lejeune wells were built on thin sand, which could allow contaminants to penetrate the aquifer. He recommended frequent inspection and repair. 1974, base order 5100-13 Bravo described a safe disposal procedure for contaminants of hazardous waste. It was not followed. In 1980, the Army Laboratory Services warned that had not point TTHM samples were highly contaminated. No action was taken. In 1982, the Naval Assessment and Control of Installation Pollutants Program was started by the Navy to identify any toxicity at naval installations. On May 6, 1982, Granger Laboratory reported the presence of PCE and TCE in Hadnot Point potable water and PCE in Tarawa Terrace potable water. In 1984, the Navy identified extensive contamination at Camp Lejeune. 1989, the EPA designated Camp Lejeune and ABC One Hour Cleaners as Superfund sites. In 1997, ATSDR identified a health hazard from exposures to contaminated water in Tarot Terrace and Hadnot Point water systems, as well as contamination of the Holcomb Boulevard system. In 2004, the Marine Corps convened a fact-finding panel. 2009, Parker Wakeman filed suit on behalf of injured Marines in the U.S. District Court of North Carolina. 2014, the 11th Circuit Court ruled against Lejeune claimants and dismissed all of their cases. In 2019, the Navy denied over 4,400 civil claims for tort benefits claiming immunity under the Federal Tort Claims Act. 2020, Parker Wakeman appealed the decisions to the U.S. Supreme Court. On May 24, 2022, the U.S. Senate's Veterans Affairs Committee released text of the Honoring Our Pact Act of 2022. The committee's bill closely followed the House bill. And on June 7, 2022, the Senate voted cloture, which meant uh, no more debate on this particular bill. The Senate, however, had several amendments uh, that it wanted to be considered. Uh, Senate voted again with these amendments, approved it, went back to the House. The House voted on the bill and it was passed. And now we are waiting for President Biden's signature. For more information, give us a call or you can visit the website displayed on the screen. Thank you.